Last night ended LSU's run through the NCAA tournament. All season long, we witnessed the Tigers come back from huge deficits. But last night, the Tigers got punched in the mouth early and seemed to never recover. The hot three-point shooting from Michigan State allowed the Spartans to maintain a lead and stop any runs the Tigers would make. For more on the game, we sent it to Brian Holland in Washington, D.C. Brian? There's one thing LSU can claim after the 2019 campaign. It is championship. The 2019 regular season championship for the Southeastern Conference. Unfortunately, they did not do enough winning there in the postseason to bring back some more hardware. As for that final game against Michigan State, an 80 to 63 loss, and also that strategy by this coaching staff to back off Michigan State's three point sharpshooters. That ended up backfiring. Now we're all left to wonder, of course, as well as the players are, what if Will Wade was a part of that final chapter? Yeah, it's kind of unfair, but, you know, we got to play through that. You know, your coach not on the court playing for you. And I know, you know, he's been here all year long, and you know, now we don't have him. he been here before, so probably he would have helped us out a little more. But, you know, we can't, no excuses. You know, we lost. You know, they fought us hard, and we just got to take the L. Benford, Armstrong, hired. They did a great job, man. I, I wouldn't say that was a huge, a huge reason as to why we lost, but... Gotcha. We just, that, that was that was us. It was a team thing, but we good. You know, I'm praying for him. I hope he just come back and be able to coach LSU. You know, I never want to see, you know, him out not coaching. So, you know, hope's the best for him. In Washington, D.C., for your Go Nation, I'm Brian Holland. All right, thanks, Brian. Let's move over to the Diamond. The number 12 Tigers bounced back last night with a 10-5 win over the number two Bulldogs and continued that momentum today as they won the rubber matchup with a final of 11-2. In the bottom of the eighth, Anton DePlantis hit a solo home run to right field, and yesterday, DePlantis became the sixth player in LSU history and 25th member of the SEC to record 300 career hits. All right, staying with the diamond, a beautiful night over there at Tiger Park for some softball, and the Tigers would be racking up the Ks early right here, three up and three down in the top of the first. Uh, let's move to the bottom of the first, and it's uh, Elise Thornhill. She would come up to the plate with runners on, and then she would hit the two-run double that would put the Tigers on the board first. Both people would score. Tigers would be up in this one. Top second, South Carolina battling back in this one. They would hit a sack fly, but watch the athleticism of Aaliyah Andrews, who's done this all year in center field, but a run would score and they would tie the game in two. LSU would be up next in this one. They would take the lead with runners on right here. Aaliyah Andrews finds a little hole. It would be 3-2. However, the Gamecocks would battle back in this one, take the lead, and win it 7-5. Let's move over to some Jaguar baseball over on the bluff. First of the doubleheaders, PV in the top fourth would hit a two-run homer to bring the lead to 8-4. Southern still would be up in this one, celebrating all over at Lee Hines Field. But the Jags would get the best of this one, top four. They would end the inning with a double play right here. Line drive to the shortstop. I just move to the bottom of the four where Jags catcher Bobby Johnson would find the gap with a two run single that would put the Jags up 10 and the runs would keep going. The final in this one doesn't seem real, 26 to four. Game two was directly after that and let's take a look at that white graphic right there. They would win game two, eight to Five, staying on the bluff. It's time for football. That spring game that's coming up, winning the Bayou Classic last season and just falling short of a SWAC championship. There's high expectations for the Jaguars. Ladarius Skelton would pick off where he left off in that SWAC championship, finding his trusty target, Kendall Catalog. Right there, the offense it looked looking great today. It was an offensive Battle, here's a bubble right here, handed it off to an array of running backs, big hits over there on the bluff. And then John Lampley right here, he would find the end zone using his legs and his speed. They're returning nine starters. So head coach Dawson Odoms just wants them to be ready for summer camp. But when you got as good of offense as we have, they go find a way to score some points. So 
gave us some big plays in the passing game, but we got a very good receiving core, very good quarterbacks. So it's a challenge to try to stop those guys. But overall competitive. I thought it was a competitive scrimmage. We got out safe, no injuries. So that's always a good thing. Uh, we got a lot of work to do. We come back, we get four practices in to really concentrate on some things and really get this football team prepared for the summer. So as football is starting, we're in the boot. Mm -hmm. It's all about football. Jaguars, Tigers, can't wait. We need some Looking good news around here after basketball still, last night. Still salty about the LSU Just a loss. little bit. Just a little but bit. But they had a great season. So great we season. Can't, we, we can be thankful for that. All right, Aaron, thank you very much. We're going to take a quick break. Danielle will have a look at weather when we return.